It's amazing how the extraordinary can become the everyday. We can turn off our lights from anywhere in the world using our smartphone. Driverless cars are just around the corner. We're living in the future, one we thought was lifetimes away. It's part of a new revolution, the Internet of Things. IoT is any physical object that you connect it to, uh, to your internet. IoT is where the physical systems and the, the information systems collide. What IoT means to me is intelligent smart devices that bring the risks and threats that we've always seen in the industrial and digital control system space into the lives of real people. Our fridges can remind us what to pick up at the store. Doctors can check on patient status from the other side of the world. Cities can monitor everything from trash cans to buses. The potential is seemingly endless. The advantages of the IoT and the data that it produces are going to be enormous from a personal health issue to the physical uh, reliability of roads and bridges. You know, we're, we should be able to know in advance before roads, bridges, cars, whatever, are failing. It starts ordering books on Amazon or making phone calls to overseas locations that we might decide would be an anomalous behavior for a light bulb that, that shouldn't be permitted. As program manager for the NIST Cybersecurity for the Internet of Things program, I spend my time thinking about how we, the federal government, industry, and individuals can best work together to tackle this new world. Everybody ready? Okay. So three, two, one. Start stimulation. Yes. Can you see? <laughs> However, amazing new biomedical advances like this one may come with their own risks if we're not careful. If we don't think about the fact that that computing device can execute code, and that visor now or in the future when it becomes a fully functional bionic eye could see a QR code, and then flip it into executing malicious code, and then that person gets ransomware to get their eyesight back, that would be a shame. Putting a device out there where you don't have an ability to, to secure it, and then it lasts for a very long time, that's a very dangerous thing. Our digital lives have become a natural extension of the physical world. We keep up with friends on social media, we control our home from our cell phones, if you leave your front door unlocked at home, odds are pretty low that people are gonna be stopping by to check. But in the cyber world, countless people are checking every door all the time. The Mirai botnet, for instance, checked these doors, and when they found them easy to open, were able to infect webcams and digital video recorders. hundreds of thousands, millions of devices compromised. Compromised because of default username and passwords. And I'm not even talking about weak passwords, they're default usernames and passwords. We're moving so quickly, we're innovating so quickly, we don't take the time to build in information security into new products, we don't build in privacy. We have to find a way to do security differently, to build security in, as opposed to slap it on in the end. And then, there's your data to consider. Whether it be my uh, kid's Barbie doll, to my car, to my HVAC, to all these sensors that are around me or with me, that in essence give you my full digital biological footprint. We have to think about what that might mean. How do you deal with the privacy implications of it? But also, what are the ethical considerations on the use of that data? If we're going to go to a model where the data is being collected as we pass every garbage can and every traffic light, um, I think Americans who, who view the ability to go on the open road and drive down Route 66 would be horrified and stand up and, and really argue against it. But with six and a half billion connected things in existence and 20 billion expected within only a couple of years, trying to live without using these connected devices gets tougher and tougher. You know, all of a sudden, you know, you're that guy in a wooden cabin in Montana, you know, 
generating your electricity from the little stream that goes by and you know, put, setting rabbit snares to eat. And that's just the devices you get to choose. Many of today's life-saving medical devices are connected and because of that are at risk for being hacked. Which makes the work being done at NIST even more important. Here at the NCCOE National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, industry, government and academia work side by side, developing practical solutions to some of industry's most pressing cybersecurity challenges. These medical infusion pumps are life-saving devices connected to hospital networks. NIST and its partners looked at how to improve the security of these wireless pumps. One recommendation was to add a digital certificate to the pump that would limit it to communicating only with specific servers. NIST publishes IT security guidelines based on this research so that anyone in industry can pick them up and follow the guide as an example of a proven method for addressing these risks. And what I see the value in NIST is the convener, bringing together true technical experts, private sector and government, and uh, manufacturers, developers, often are the technicals, but also the policy side. It's really about whether my kids are gonna live in a nice world in 15 years. And so I'm looking to NIST to, to solve that problem for me. While NIST can't solve the problem alone, by collaborating, we can work towards a more secure IoT future, where what's extraordinary today can truly become the everyday. <laughs>